Anyone else want to have a conversation? Or... Yeah, go on, bro. What's your advice for like lukewarm Christians? People struggling to really, I don't know, say no to temptation once they discover Christ, I guess. Right, so firstly, struggling with sin doesn't mean that you're a lukewarm Christian, right? St. Francis of Assisi used to struggle with sin. No one would accuse him of not being zealous. He used to throw himself into the rose garden as a punishment for his sin, right? So he struggled with sin. No one would say that he wasn't uh, zealous. So you're framing it wrong to start off with. A lukewarm Christian is not someone who struggles with sin. A lukewarm Christian is someone who doesn't struggle with sin. Do you see the difference? Yeah. So if you're not struggling with sin, you're probably a lukewarm Christian. If you are struggling with sin, you're probably not a lukewarm Christian. But now let's turn to the question of, well, what do you do about the sin that you're struggling with? Most sins, when they become habitual, and I'm struggling with my own habitual sins, so this is one ill patient giving another ill patient advice. This isn't a doctor giving advice to a patient, right? Yeah, this is one cancer sufferer giving tips to another cancer sufferer. So, the, the or maybe one person who's got a heart disease talking to someone else who's got a heart disease about things they can do to make it better. All sin is rooted in pursuing something that's actually good, right? Sexual sin is rooted in the fact that we often, we're looking for a wife or a husband. Um, greed is often uh, resultant in the fact that we need material goods. Um, envy is usually resulted in the fact that we see a good that someone else has that we want for ourselves, whatever it might be. Pride is usually resulted in the fact that we, we need some kind of we need some kind of basis upon which to build our sense of identity. So all sin is rooted actually in the desire for something good. So the best thing you can do is to identify the good that you lack in your life and as a way of tackling your habitual sin to start building into your life the means by which you can grasp the good that you need. Does that make sense? Sort of. Sort of, yeah. Right. So let's just, do you want to say which sin it is or shall I just use my own? So it's more like, it's more like, I'd say, t t t temptation to like, I don't know, say my friends who are going out to a club for example. Yeah. I, don't, I know, I know, I know it's wrong, I know, I know I shouldn't do it, but it's very easy for me to be like, yeah, like last time I'll go, like, I won't do it again. Sort yeah. Of thing. Like, yeah. That's like sort of, sort of what I'm struggling with. Just yes. saying like no almost. Yeah. So, so let's be clear. Um, the way that we currently do nightclubs, they're just dens of iniquity, yeah. right? Christians don't have any reason to be in a nightclub except to evangelize, right? Um, though it is possible for a group of Christians to go to a nightclub and not participate in the sin around them. Well, yeah, I mean, it is hard not to, and too many Christians fall because they go, fall into that culture. But what you're telling me there is that what you're desiring is fellowship. What you're desiring is communion with friends so what you need to do to tackle that sin is to, is to have fun with your friends in godly ways so why not get your friends to go rock climbing with you why not get your friends to go hiking with you why not get your friends to have a picnic with you why not get your friends to go to a Kaylee dance with you a Kaylee dance is, is a is a traditional Christian kind of dance where like it's very dignified it's kind of like a barn dance yeah right, okay. it's all done in public it's all done in daylight it's not associated with sexualization it's not associated with grotesque music it's not associated with alcohol abuse it's great fun it's great exercise you do dance and you get to talk to people but in a setting that doesn't encourage sin right so what you're telling me is that you want to find ways to have fellowship with your friends but they, it's all about sin, yeah, yeah. But, but, but they're pulling you into sinful ways. Are your friends Christian? Uh, majority of them are not. No. Right. So my first advice to you is try to get your friends to come to more Christian activities and enjoy Christian activities with you. Mm -hmm. Might go to the gym together. Yeah. Might go to a coffee shop together. Right. 
Yeah. You can go to a pub together, so long as the point of going to the pub is just to have a social drink and not get drunk. Yeah. Right? But if you find that they're dragging you into sin and you can't pull them the other way, then what you need to do is you need to apply Jesus' teaching, the apostles' teaching, which is not to be an unevenly yoked with the unbeliever. To be unevenly yoked to the unbeliever means that you, part, you are being pulled into sin by them, which means that you might need to cut off these friends and find new friends, right? And, and, and that's something you need to be willing to do. Because what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world, but if by doing so he loses his own soul? It is, more, it is better for you for, to cut off your friends than it is to lose your salvation. So either you are adamant to pull your friends into the good, or you cut them off and you, you go in and you start building Christian friendships. The point. Yeah? yeah? Any other questions, bro? Brilliant. How long have you been a Christian? Uh, I mean, I'd say I was lukewarm. I mean, I was, I was baptised young, but I don't know. I, I, I didn't really sort of start believing until last year. I'm, I'm sort of trying to, trying to build that uh, faith on through coming here, through watching YouTube videos, through going to church, etc. Trying to yeah. find fellow Christian people who yeah. sort of listen to and get yeah. advice from. Right. So, brother, I, I would say to you that here is not the place to build up your faith. No. This is not a, a, a discipleship place. This is a spiritual battleground where people are coming to battle for souls. And lots of Christians lose their soul here because they're ill-equipped to be here. There are Christians that come here and they aren't helping the church at all. They're just causing trouble, yeah. right? Every kind of heresy, heresy error, uh, and false teaching is, can be found in this place. Right? This is not a safe place for a young Christian. Right? You need to find good Christian teachers and learn from them. Right? And, and so what I'd like to do is to invite you. I run a discipleship group on a Monday evening, 7.30 until 9 o'clock on Zoom. And on Tuesdays, 9 o'clock until 10.30 on Zoom. Come and join that group and, and learn about Christianity in a safe environment. Right? And whatever you do in this place, always be guarding your heart. Always be protecting your heart. Because this is a place where charlatans, uh, liars and the workers of the devil are well at play here. And the servants of the kingdom of God are well at play here. But if you're a young new Christian, you're probably more in danger than you are useful. Right? So it might not be wise for you to be here. It's my first time here today, so I'm sort of gauging it a little bit. Yeah. So far, there's been a lot of bad stuff going on. I can tell probably shouldn't be happening. Yeah. My, my advice to you is, is, if, is if the enemies of the church approach you, just don't, don't say you don't want to engage them. Yeah. And certainly don't let them film you. Because the Dawagandists are looking for people like you. They won't debate people like me. They won't debate the knowledgeable Christians in the park. They come here looking for you, and the moment they find you, they turn you into cannon fodder. They turn you into film fodder, right? And, and this is my warning to all Christians coming to this park, is don't let the Dawagandists use you, right? Right, so, so stay away from them. Good. Uh, and don't let them use you for filming material, and just come and speak to the Christians, yeah? But remember, not everyone in this park who's calling themselves a Christian is a Christian. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of non-Christians in this park, heretics, who, who are... Yeah, they, these are, for instance, you've got Aryans here who deny Jesus' divinity. You've, you've even had Ebionites here. You've got Gnostics here, right? You've got, and then you've got, you've got the servants of the devil here, sectarian Christians who want to divide and rip up the church and turn Christian against Christian. And they just go around trying to stir up trouble between brothers. This is not a safe spiritual place. Yeah? All right. Get in touch if you want to. Peace be with you. God bless you, brother.